morning. Uh, as promised, we're going to do a little bit of a, well, haunted book shopping today, and I ain't talking about the ghostly kind either. No, we're talking about, well, the tobacco kind, haunted book shop, which uh, I've, I've loaded in my corn cob in homage to, uh, well, today's topic, and that's the, the haunted book shop novel by one Christopher Morley. Uh, Christopher Morley was a journalist, novelist, essayist, poet, and uh, I was going to read it here today, but then it was just a little bit too long. So check it out if you can. It's called uh, My Pipe by Christopher Morley. It's kind of a good little poem. Uh, anyway, he was born May 5th, 1890 in Bryn Mawr, Pennsylvania. He died March 28th, 1957 at the age of 66, young, in Roseland Heights, Long Island, New York. Uh, he studied at Haverford College. Um... He was a Rhodes Scholar at the New College of Oxford. Uh, I believe he studied American history or world history, and one of the two. <laughs> so I got a 50-50 chance of getting that right. Uh, he, uh, he worked on the school newspaper there, uh, and, and he wrote a lot. Uh, and this, he acquired a job when he first got out of college at Ladies Home Journal as an editor of the magazine. Um, and uh, he also got a job as a... As a reading publisher at Doubleday Publishing. Uh, pretty prestigious. I don't think you just get a job there because you don't know what you're talking about or what you're looking at. Uh, 1917, he wrote his first novel, and this is where we get started in our haunted bookshop characters. Uh, he wrote Parnassus on Wheels, and I don't know if I pronounced that right, and there's going to be a few more words in here that I word butcher because, well, uh, Mr. Morley had, well, more vernacular, let's say, than I had. Uh, vernacular is the right term there. Once again, word butcher card. Uh, Parnassus is on wheels in 1917. Uh, Roger Mifflin, the lead character in that book and The Haunted Bookshop, met his wife, uh, Helen, uh, who was, uh, well, they were both getting on in years a little, a little and uh, they they got married, and that brings us to the Haunted Bookshop, where they now called it, well, let's put it this way, uh, Parnassus, Parnassus at Home. We'll get to that here in a minute. In his, in his uh, well, his family life, uh, in 1920, he bought a house that he and his wife Helen both named The Great Escape. Uh, a few years later, he... He wrote himself his own reading nook, man cave, so to speak, and he called it, well, he called it the Nod Hole, and I, I just think that's a cool name, man. What a cool name for a place to kick back and hide out, the Nod Hole. In 1934, uh, he, he formed the club, the Baker Street Irregulars. There's probably some guys out there that are very into Sherlock's home and Sherlock Anania, I think they called it back then, that I know about this little club. Um, and it, it started from a, a kind of informal club that I'm reading notes in my, uh, <laughs> my laptop's not, well, not cooperating today. Haunted! But anyway, he, uh, I uh, started this club out of a, well, an informal club that was called uh, uh, the Three Hours for Lunch Club. I don't know if that's like the Three Martinis for Lunch Club, but anyway. Um, and it, it, to this day, it still exists, and it has over 300 members. Uh, it was mostly male-dominated uh, uh, for a very long period of time. And when I mean very long, I mean from 1934 to 1991. When they finally let their first woman in by the name of Dane, Dame Jean Conan Doyle. She was the second daughter of, well, you guess it, Sir Arthur Conan, Conan Doyle, uh, who wrote Sherlock Holmes and who the club was, well, he was kind of their mascot. So, yeah. Uh, another fun fact about uh, Christopher Morley, he, uh, his novel that he wrote that became very popular in 1939 called Kitty Foyle was then made into a, well, a major motion picture. Uh, and Ginger Rogers, also known as the Ginger Rogers that did a lot of twisting and turning and, 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 and dancing across the screen with Fred Astaire, 
Uh, she won a Best Actress Award for that role, and the dress that she wore in the movie became known as the Kitty Foil dress, and it was very popular in that day. Um, <laughs> and then, uh, um, uh, what I also found as I delved into some of the history of Christopher Morley, Dalton Trumbo, the uh, well, he was he was in that whole red scandal of well in Hollywood in the forties, fifties, and I think maybe the early sixties. It, it might have stopped in the end of the fifties, but. Anyway, uh, yeah, he wrote the screenplay for Kitty Foyle from, well, the novel by Christopher Morley. And uh, there's a great movie called Trumbo with Brian Cranston and Diane Lane, pretty recent. Uh, and, and I watched it. It's, it's pretty good and, and pretty scary how uh, pretty how scary how things work when somebody comes knocking on your door, really. Um, anyway, so uh, still enjoying the haunted bookshop. It appears I have scared the uh, ghosts and goblins off of my, uh, well, <laughs> my tablet now. And I'm going to, well, I'm going to start out this with uh, a little bit of, uh, well, this is on, and by the way, this is on page 13 almost. I find the sign for uh, Mr. Mifflin's bookshop in the Haunted Bookshop, which is called Parnassus at Home, um, pretty interesting. And I'm just, it, there's a, a little block in the book that kind of tells what the sign is, and, and I just thought it was kind of cool. It's Parnassus is at Home, word butcher card there. R&H Mifflin, book lovers welcome. This shop is haunted. And what he meant by haunted was, well, uh, he meant it was haunted by the ghosts of all great literature. And Mr. Mifflin, uh, the character, uh, he, he believed that literature could, well, it could, uh, he, he, he claimed he was a biblio, bibliotherapist, and I think he might have made that word up. I don't know. I didn't do enough research to find out if he did or not. But he claimed that a good book and a bibliotherapist such as himself could heal the mind, just like, well, a physician of the time could heal the one's body. And uh, I found that kind of cool because, you know, if you think about it, uh, reading does heal in some ways, uh, spiritually, uh, mentally. I don't know about physically, but maybe it does. Um, and, uh, yeah, so, uh, and the main characters in this are pretty cool. Uh, Roger Mifflin, described as short, balding, red-headed, uh, what we would call up into the middle age, and if you're going to live to be 80, I'm assuming. And uh, his wife, Helen. Their dog, Bach, who was named after an author, Bocatius, I believe. Uh, and the first name of the author escapes me, so forgive me. Uh, but And speaking of names, the, the, the Parnassus thing, I think I got it right that time. Uh, I, I wondered what, what the meaning of that was. Well, apparently what I could find is it's a mountain in central Greece uh, of Greek mythology where apparently the Greek muses lived. So I thought that was pretty interesting, kind of fitting. Uh, some other characters in the book, Aubrey Gilbert, who's kind of the, the dashing hero uh, and advertise, advertising salesman at the time, but uh, he falls in love. This is a love story as well. He falls in love with Titania Chapman, who's come to the bookshop to, uh, well, work for a year under the tutelage of Mr. Mifflin. But, uh, yeah, the whole book uh, it turns kind of Sherlocky and kind of, uh, well, suspenseful. Uh, there's an assassination plot. There's a president involved. And... Uh, there's one hell of an explosion, and I won't tell you when that happens. Uh, and I don't want to give the book away because I'm hoping many of you go and purchase it. Especially if you're haunted, if you're smoking haunted bookshop, I challenge you to read the haunted bookshop. There, I said it. Anyway, um, I also found some other great words in this book um, besides uh, bibliotherapist, and, and one of my favorite ones was. Uh, I'm going to put it on the screen right here because 
I'm probably going to butcher this. Libro cubicularist. Libro cubicularist. Something to that manner. And uh, this is made up by Mr. Mifflin. And um, it's a fond reader of books in bed. So, yeah, I guess I'm one. Uh, if you're one out there, let us know as well. Give a comment. And uh, back to the, uh, well, the corn cob here, which I just about knocked off the table and had to stop this video, which I've already had to stop like five times a day. So <laughs> right now I'm cruising and I like to keep it that way. In the haunted bookshop, well, it's not lighting right now. <laughs> but this makes me stop the video. Apparently my, 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 my fire went out. We'll try this one. Pick this one up yesterday. Well, at Dollar Tree again. Maybe I should get the hint about Dollar Tree lighters because that one was just started like two days ago. Much better, much better. Okay, now on with the story. Uh, the reason I'm smoking the corn cob is because that's the first pipe that Mr. Mifflin's smoking in, uh, in well, in the haunted bookshop. And, uh, well, there's a, there's a club in there that I found was just great. It's called the Corn Cob Club. And uh, they have a little rhetoric going back and forth. And uh, there's even a asterisk at the beginning of the Corn Club corn cob club chapter say that three times real fast um that basically states if you don't like booksellers omit this chapter i'm at the end of this chapter which means don't read it uh and it, it's a pretty good discussion amongst the corn cob club uh kind of humorous and uh they, they discuss a lot of things uh there's a lot of a lot of books from that time period and a lot of great authors and and legendary authors Names thrown about during the book and lines from certain books. Um, Henry David Thoreau is, is mentioned. Ralph Waldo Emerson. Thomas Cromwell, who's part of the plot a little bit. And, well, even the poet Emily Dickinson. Uh, those names are tossed about. You know, even some Shakespeare. Uh, what I did find funny in one of the discussions of the Corn Cob Club was there were, the movie Tarzan at that time must have been out, like one of the first serials or, or non-talkies of it and uh everybody seems to be going to see it and uh well the, the one the one of the corn cob, cob club members says uh have you seen tarzan yet mifflin mifflin replies not while i can still read the jumble book <laughs> touche roger yeah so um anyway i i think we've covered all the bases of uh well, the Haunted Bookshop, besides me showing you my edition of the Haunted Bookshop, and there's, if you go to Thrift Books, there's many editions out there. Um, but this one's a great edition. It's got some great illustrations in it by Christopher Morley. Um, and, of course, I won't be able to open, open to one very quickly here. But, oh, well, rawr. how about Titania Chapman? She's a doll, huh? Yeah. Anyway. Uh, now that I made enough fool of myself and, uh, well, and uh, stopped and started this video a hundred times, we've gotten through it with the help of a good pipe, a good book, and, well, some good tobacco. And uh, I'm going to bid you an luego from the tip of my bowler, and uh, we're going to catch you in the next one. Once again, I challenge you. Go get the Haunted Bookshop and read it. Especially if you're smoking Haunted Bookshop tobacco in your pipe. Because if you haven't read this and you're smoking, shame on you. Have a good one.